Hello everyone, welcome to the middle term of our semester. Our first module is problem solving and reasoning. Learning outcomes. At the end of the lesson, the student can apply inductive and deductive reasoning to solve problems, solve problems involving patterns and recreational problems following Polya's strategy, and organize one's methods and approaches for proving and solving problems. The first lesson under this module is about inductive and deductive reasoning. Let us start with defining the term problem. What is a problem? A problem is a situation that conforms the learner, that requires a resolution and for which the path of the answer is not immediately known. There is an obstacle that prevents one from setting a clear path to the answer. What is problem solving? The term problem solving refers to mathematical tasks that have the potential to provide intellectual challenges for enhancing a student's mathematical understanding and development that's according to the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. And according to depth at K-12, problem solving is finding a way around a difficulty, around an obstacle, and finding a solution to a problem that is unknown. As an introduction to the nature of mathematical reasoning, let us do first this activity. Predict the next number in each of the following list. So you may actually pause this video and try to find the next term of the following sequences. Let us now check your answers. For number 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, what's the next term of that sequence? It is 18. That is by adding 3, isn't it? The, the rule is add 3 to the term to get the next term. Okay, how about the second sequence? 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. The answer is 21. That is by adding the counting numbers starting with 2. So we add here 2, then we add 3, we add 4, we add 5, and then we should add 6 to get the next term. And that's actually 21. How about the third sequence? The answer is 37. That is by adding the odd numbers starting with 3. So we add 3 here, we add 5, we add 7, we add 9, then we should add 11 to get the next term. That's why we get 37. How about the next sequence? What's the next term of the next sequence? The next term is 405. That is multiplying 3. So you, you multiply 3 to 5, you get 15. You multiply 3 to 15, you get 45. Multiply 3 to 45, you get 140, 135. And by multiplying 3 to 135, you will get 405. How about the next sequence? What pattern did you observe on that? Okay, so the next term is 49. That is actually, can be actually, uh, uh, what do you call that? We can actually get the answer by squaring, okay? The numbers starting with actually two, so we have two squared, that's four. Three is squared is nine, four is squared is actually 16. 5 is squared is 25, and then you have 6 squared is 36. So the next term should be 7 squared, and that's equal to 49. And then how about the last sequence? What should be the next term? The next term is 225. And why? What's the pattern? The pattern is we multiply here 5 and then we subtract 5 to get 10, 
we again multiply 5 to get 50, then we subtract 5 to get 45, then you should multiply 5 to 45 to get the next term. And that's why we have 225. Okay, so who got a perfect score? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 over 6. Let us do this activity. So I hope you have a piece of paper, a calculator maybe can help you, and also pen to actually do this activity. So you just follow the procedure here. Consider the following procedures. Pick a number, multiply the number by 8, add 6 to the product, divide the sum by 2, and subtract 3. You may use these uh, numbers in the table. We have 5, 7, 2, 3, and 6 and get the resulting number by following this procedure or steps. And what you're going to actually do after completing this table is you have to make a conjecture or an educated guess about the relationship between the size of the resulting number and the size of the original number. So you may pause this video and complete the table. Okay, I hope you're done and let's now check your answer. So if the original number is 5, what will be the resulting number? It's 20. And if the original number is 7, the resulting number is 28. How about if it's 2, what's the resulting number? 8. And how about 4 is 3? It's 12. How about 6? It's 24. So now, what can you uh, what have you observed about the original number and the resulting number? What can you say about their relationship? How is the resulting number related to the original number? Can you write your conjecture or educated guess in one statement or one sentence? So the conjecture may be the resulting number is four times the original number. And if we let the original number be denoted by n, the resulting number can be written as, in symbols, 4n. So that's the meaning of this conjecture. The resulting number is four times the original number. Did you get it? I hope so. Let us try another one. So you try this. You may pause this video and try to answer this activity. Let us now check your answer. So I hope you actually followed the procedure. Pick a number, add 50 to that, and then you multiply the sum by 2. You subtract the original number from the product. So what will be the resulting number if the original number is 2? We have 102. How about if the num given number is 5? The resulting number is 105. How about it, it, if it's 10? And if it's 30, what's the resulting number? 130. So now, given these four examples here, what have you observed and the relationship between the resulting number and the original number? Can you relate? Can you see or observe their relationship? So what is your conjecture? The conjecture can be? The resulting number is 100 more than the original number. And that can be written into symbols such as, if we let the original number as x, the resulting number will be x plus 100. And that's the meaning of our conjecture. The resulting number is 100 more than the resulting number. Okay. And the big question now is, what kind of thinking is used when you are solving those kinds of problems in the previous slides? What kind of thinking is used when solving problems? There are two types of reasoning or thinking when solving problems or even making decisions. One of these is inductive reasoning. So what is inductive reasoning? 
Deductive reasoning is the process of making general or reaching a general conclusion by examining a specific examples. An example of this is the three high school math teachers I had were smart. I guess that all math teachers are smart. The second type of reasoning is what we call deductive reasoning. So what is deductive reasoning? Deductive reasoning is the process of reaching a conclusion by applying general assumptions, procedures, or principles. An example is, based on the grading system, a grade from 90 to 92 is equivalent to 1.75. If I get 95% on my final exam, my average will be 91.5%, so I will get a grade of 1.75. Let us check your understanding and the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. Determine whether it's the following arguments is an example of inductive reasoning or deductive reasoning. You may pause this video and try to answer this exercise. Let's check your answers. For number one, during the past 10 years, a tree has produced plums every other year. Last year, the tree did not produce plums. So this year, the tree will produce plums. So this is an example of inductive reasoning. So we have actually specific examples and then we make a conclusion. So from a specific to making a conclusion or generalization, uh, that's what we call inductive reasoning. All homes improvements cost more than the estimate. The contractor estimated that my home improvement will cost 350,000 pesos. Thus, my home improvement will cost more than 350,000 pesos. So this is an example of deductive reasoning. So if you start from assumptions or from procedures, formula, laws, or properties, and you make a conclusion, that's what we call deductive reasoning. How about number three? For number three, that is also deductive reasoning. And for number four, that is inductive reasoning. I hope you get it now, the, the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. Congratulations for those who got four. And that's all for our first lesson under module one, inductive and deductive reasoning. If you have any question, clarification, or you want to share something, you may do that during our MS Teams Meet, the synchronous session. Thank you, stay safe.